So, John Reed, JDOD, we have the day after shoot. Look who I roped in for a day after BI roundup rehash blowout. Miko Yuk, the notorious Miko Yuk. How you doing? I'm well, John. A pleasure to be on here again. Definitely. So you've been uh, working hard all week digging into these BI stories, and there was some news too. So why don't we start with the news, and then we'll go from there. Uh, we have visual intelligence, or that's what it's being called now at any rate. Busy. Vizzy, as you have already coined it. So, do you like Vizzy? I do. Um, they definitely, I think SAP definitely stepped up its game in terms of the actual visuals. I even saw an introduction of some geo intelligence, which is very impressive. And overall, it just seems very easy to use. So, help us understand, SAP's got a robust portfolio of little BI products, of Webby, dashboards, you explore. So why do, we need, why do we need visual intelligence? Why do your customers need it? Okay, so there's two sides to that story. On the one end, the silica the positive first, it is a innovative tool that eventually allow customers to use HANA to do things they've never been able to do in a BI portfolio. So I think looking toward the future is a great tool. Um, as I said, it's one of the easiest tools I've seen to use in a portfolio for business analysts, etc. On the flip side, it's another tool. And that's probably one of the things I've heard again and again, which is, why do we have so many tools in a BI portfolio? And you've heard me talk about that online. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, it's very useful, but we do question, why do we have yet another tool? So you're looking at kind of a self-service BI tool in this case, right? So Correct. Something, uh, and it's compatible with Explorer. Correct. So it has some instant mobile relevance. Right. And, and it's basically going up against products that we know of like... It's Tableau, and yeah, Tableau, Tableau software. Yeah, and also click, click view kind of thing, sort of yeah. similar. So yeah. what, the, and what is being called right now, just to get onto developer terms, I'm sure developers are going to watch this, is they're basically saying it's one, layman terms, explorer on the desktop, and okay. two, it's a Tableau lookalike. Okay. That's been the overall conclusion industry-wise. So in theory, SAP kind of needs this to go up to make sure that its customers have an alternative to these other... Third Correct. Yeah. Even though they play well with them. I mean, Tableau was up on, uh, was utilizing and integrated with BW before Excelsius was. Okay. So they're playing well with them, but I assume at some point SAP wants to incubate their market. Right, right, right. So other BI news at Sapphire, there wasn't a lot of talk around predictive analytics, but there is a solution that is coming. Correct. What do you think of that? Well, I'll be honest. I mean, when I when I came into Sapphire and I had the first set of meetings with like John Swizer, um, you know, we have Michael Re Reyes, the new guy. I was told there were two things to look forward to. Uh, one was SAP VZ or Visual Intelligence, and two was predictive analysis. I never heard anything in a conference about predictive analysis, and to be honest, it's very impressive. I mean, I got a very short demo, not too much detail, it was a marketing person, but I kind of said, okay, SAP is making waves. So mm -hmm. I don't know why we didn't hear so much about it. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that in the summertime we're going to hear more, because it does seem like so. it's pretty close. Why do you think that fills a gap? What's interesting about that? Well, for the longest while, SAP has been talking about the fact that the next wave in BI is predictive analysis. Mm -hmm. They had, they tried to be honest to give you a little bit of history. They actually tried to hand it last year, mm -hmm. and that was a. It was. <laughs> it was how do we put that diplomatically? Right. Uh, it was an attempt. Right. Um, and it's. And this looks like a much better. It's an attempt, a, yeah, right. A much better one, yeah. A much better attempt. So I think that they're definitely trying to infiltrate that market. If you look at some of the Gartner reports, etc., that is where BI is. Everybody's talking about the fact that I have all this data and now I want to figure out what can I do next based on my history, predictive analysis. So I think SAP definitely is trying to appeal also to the higher level, you know, the CEOs, etc., more the business people, and predictive analysis is where the market is at right now. Mm -hmm. So again, it, what they have looks good. The fact that we didn't hear about it makes me question whether or not it was ready to come out of the box. Mm. Now, obviously one of the things about your work is you're constantly talking with customers around these issues. Yeah. Have you gotten some customer feedback on, on what was discussed this week, what kinds of things you're hearing? Yeah, so one of the things I did, John, and you know I was a rookie a few years ago before I met you guys, is I took the last day to spend some time on the show floor, right? You know we don't get to sit on the show floor too often. Right. And I kind of hung around the analytics podium and there became an attraction for customers. And I heard a number of things. I figured out where to start. I guess if I start with Vizzy, um, you get the regular talk. There's two things, which is one, why another tool? 
that's the mm. obvious and two it was about the roadmap for it in terms mm. of connectivity so as of today Vizi connects to I'm sorry visual intelligence connects to HANA and what we were initially told on day one is that it was going to connect to BW next mm. by the time I got to the podium on day three I was told HANA is first agnostic platforms which is non SAP that includes business objects is next and then BW because it's the most complicated mm -hmm. because initially what happened because of the story with Zen you know the story with Zen where it's right. going to connect to HANA and BW and eventually business objects right people are a little the business objects community that I serve was very iffy with SAP going when 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 are we going to get a toy so it's interesting to see that they kind of reprioritize their data connectivity and I'm interested to see if they stick with that and what yeah. will happen. Now you brought up Zen, so can you quickly explain what that is and what your sure. take on that is? So Zen is going to be our next, <laughs> for it's the, Zen started out as a new tool to replace, I believe, the web analysis tool mm -hmm. in on the SAP side. And what happened is we had, I know you saw the Excelsius SOD where Excelsius is in, in a dilemma with this flash issue. We did it on the next video. And, Excel, and SAP basically had to come up with an answer as to what are Excelsius customers going to do. Mm -hmm. The technology is not going anywhere. Um, flash pull out of enterprise, you know the long story. Okay, right. So it's hanging there. It's beautiful. It's the number one pre-sales tool. You do know that, right? So they're selling everything and the pocket with it, but it cannot get on mobile. So what SAP has said is that Zen, which is going to be their new data, dashboarding tool except the difference I don't know if you've have you used Excelsius before and seen like it has an Excel spreadsheet right right Zen is going to be an application rich development environment um, where they're going to allow people or developers not business users to use Excel to create additional components and charts within there now the interesting part about this is we were told that when Zen comes out in I think GA in December is going to connect to BW Mm -hmm. We were then told eventually customers would be able to port Excelsius into Zen, I'm thinking by Sapphire next year, mm -hmm. optimistically, and re keep their ROI, and then everything they do in Excelsius they can do in Zen plus more. Mm -hmm. So they're trying, they have like two technologies that are running parallel, and their goal is to eventually merge and Zen them. would be the HTML5, would there be like a HTML5 framework there as well? Well, that's the thing. I don't think so and this is where it begins to get a bit confusing. Uh, now let's get into the treacherous waters here. Right. <laughs> and I'm on camera. That definitely let's, let's helps, right? Yeah. So apparently, so let's talk about some other surprise that came up on the floor first as we get into HTML5. So when we did the Excelsius SOD webinar, the one, you know, we had 1,100 people sign up, 700 people show up, insane webinar. We were told that Excelsius would have HTML5 controls on it and you'd be able to use it in any browser, mm -hmm. any, 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 uh, tablet device. Interestingly enough, on day three, I went to the analytics pod and someone pops up an iPad and says, look at the HTML5 uh, dashboard, which was Excelsius. Mm -hmm. So one, it had limited controls, which is understandable because they're slowly building. Right. But the most interesting part is that to do that, they open up Mobi, mm -hmm. right? And so you have to go through Mobi now as the wrapper to get to all of your Webby, Crystal, or Excelsius dashboards on right. iPad. That not, was not, not the explore, plan. Not explore, but everything else. Everything else. Right, right. And what's the concern there? Well, the concern is that, again, when we were told about it, there was no talk of a wrapper or a mobile or app. Mm -hmm. It was just, you're going to have controls, you're going to build, and therefore you could open up in any application. Mm -hmm. When you're tied to Mobi now, you're now tied, you know, you're incubated, right? So you're now tied to whatever they do with the app, where the app is applicable, so on and so forth. So we have, like I put it out online for instance on Twitter, and you have companies that said, what do you mean it's using Mobi? I was planning, I thought they just told us that it would be free, open to any browser, any, so something changed mm -hmm. in the last two weeks prior to me getting I here. See. So I take it one of your messages to SAP going forward would be, please don't have this be the long-term solution there. It's a wrapper. You, you don't want the wrapper ultimately, right? Correct. And that will simplify the landscape for customers and developers and so on. Not only so, that, more than right. please don't do it, please stick with a straight story so customers can plan. Uh-oh, here we go. You know, yeah. I mean, honest yeah. to God, two weeks ago, we just had this discussion. Mm -hmm. Day three of this conference, I happened to mm -hmm. wander on the show floor, and here's Excelsius wrapped mm -hmm. into Mobi. We were on the line with 700 people globally. They mm -hmm. never said that, you know? So it just seems like the story keeps changing. I guess it is a little little scary sometimes if, if yourself and even myself a little further away, if we're struggling, then how are customers? Exactly. Right, yeah. And every time I put stuff out online, you know, on Twitter, for instance, I see the responses come back right away. Well, I was planning, what, 
what's going mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. You know, because the minute that customers get this information in our world, they start to plan. Right. You know, the whole thing is, I know it's not coming tomorrow, but I need to plan. Right. Right. And so every time something changes, we're now it's attached to the app. You know, you're, you're so, and then I keep getting the, it's in the roadmap. We are so tired of hearing it's in the roadmap. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I can't begin to tell you. We've gotten that answer a hundred million times. And what do you want to hear instead of that? We want the road, if it's in the roadmap, then don't change the roadmap. I see. So evolve you, it, don't change it. There's a difference between evolving it and saying we're adding, but when you are mm, reprioritizing and putting mm, in big changes like an app, that's a little bit of a change. All right, so you and I can whine all, all we want. We may or may not get a result. Sometimes we do. Yep. Um, but are you saying that this is impacting customer investments? Because that's what SAP will really listen to. Yes. This is impacting customer investments. I definitely think it is because okay. on the highest level, every time we change, another customer loses faith. Mm -hmm. You know, another customer loses confidence in SAP because let's think about it. They've had this issue going on for four years, John. Mm -hmm. At minimum, they haven't executed, but you do want to think as a customer, they've figured it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're prioritizing HANA. When these sudden changes come, customers are already low confidence. Some of them just drop off drop off the, the okay. slate, right. you know, and that's a big problem. It's a lot deeper than what they're doing. It's the overall confidence level and SAP's ability to execute. I see. 